Well, thank you very much, Marcela. Um, I must say that when your friend, the other Marcela, told me you guys were going into this project, I said, well, yeah, maybe. After seeing the output, and this is the second time I see it, I think this is really extremely important. And I'm sure uh, you mentioned that at the beginning, this is the first step of a wider agenda, trying to understand some of the cross-country variation in this shape, how, how this could be changed by policy, other determinants of this equilibrium. Just some isolated notes, perhaps, for, for further conversation, uh, and, and we can uh, talk about this later. Um, I haven't followed this detail uh, in, in all of Latin America, but in my country, don't, don't write down, I'll, let, I, I'll take notes for you later. Um, in my country, there is a lot of people who have some life arrangements that implied participation in some things called social movements. And these are people who are in working age and they get their salaries through sort of state programs administered by what would be the labor unions of the informal and unemployed. First, I was wondering how these people appear in your sample, and then I also, uh, and I have been pondering a lot, which is the political dynamics behind that, because there is a game in which for various labor market regulations, state intervention, uh, political dynamics, it's much more productive to, uh, to stay. So, so there is a matter of understanding the determinants. Some will be productivity related, some will be the, the structure of the economy related, some will be regulations in the labor market and in other markets. And then the other side that I'm sure you guys are going, are going to that, is sort of the other extreme. I remember the joke of the other Marcella yesterday, uh, people who look at firms and people who look at people. Uh, in some sense, also the distribution of human capital of the population supposedly gets much here. I'm wondering how, much, uh, how that much works and what is the priority for those of us that, like myself now, that work with people more than with firms. Like, okay, if I increase the human capital, so all these kids eventually will get to a good job, but then you show me that there is no good job until you get really higher up in Latin America, and these kids will never make it if it is a supply side phenomenon of the organization of firms. So I think this is probably, you know, one of the crucial things we have to unravel to see what are the next policy steps. Thank you very much. So, so thanks very much, Mariano. I mean, this is, these are precisely the, I think, the large questions to which this uh, facts speak to. Um, if I were to answer your, your, uh, to your list, I would be uh, very boring and basically repeat it, um, maybe with a different ordering in terms of what I think are the priorities. To start with, as, uh, as the income distribution showed us, I, I of course emphasize the fact that we have this uh, low, long and, and dense, uh, densely populated tail, but the first thing that jumps to your, view, to your eyes, I'm sure, is the fact that the distribution is very much shifted to the left. Um, and, and I think that has to be traced to the distribution of uh, productivity uh, captured by human, by human talent. So if you start there, um, my first inclination would be to, uh, to put that high in the, in the list, I think. In terms of the determinants, part of what's, going, of what's going on is if you take the underlying productivity distribution, that is to say, what are our capabilities to, to produce value that translates into income for people? And when we say what are our, I'm thinking about people, what are the capabilities of these people, uh, we have a very much shifted to the left distribution. Um, and, and that is the first issue to solve. So if you, ju if you just took that and we had no institutions, and, or rather institutions were identical to the other countries uh, w uh, with higher incomes, uh, you would by construction already start finding that the people who are with lower capabilities uh, end up organizing in lower productivity firms and that those, those lower productivity firms are going to be smaller and you would have smaller firms. So that would be sort of your basic macro model without distortions. But it, then if on top of that you start laying out uh, the institutions, then you're going to have more, uh, more answers. And if I'm going to um, give you a second priority, 
for the case of Latin America, I would precisely point at one of the things you mentioned, the labor market. Um, I think one of the main barriers for this building up of the smaller businesses, smaller but still organized and able to grow, and in all my previous work, I, I think me and other people would have shown is that if we have a deficit in terms of productivity, it is not so much a deficit of our ability to form enterprises or to uh, be entrepreneurs, but rather an ability to have those businesses grow. Um, and so that's, I think that's, uh, that's very high, a very high priority. And one of the main barriers is definitely how costly it is to organize um, in terms of, of labor. And I'm sure in the next panel, Santiago will lay out some of the alternatives uh, that he and other people have been thinking about for, for uh, labor productivity. Then the third issue, I think, is definitely the tax uh, systems. Um, Latin America is characterized by tax systems that rely mostly on businesses to produce their income. Um, very high corporate income tax uh, rates, uh, very high fraction of the collection coming from businesses. And so just creating businesses that uh, pay those taxes thus are formalized, thus are able to also uh, grab some size without you know, having to be uh, under the radar um, is another challenge. And, and I think that's, that's also a, a crucial issue. And I think there's going to be necessarily a tension between the question of uh, redistribution. Um, Colombia today is in the midst of discussing a tax reform. Part of the discussion is, are we going to uh, uh, tax dividends uh, more strongly? Is that uh, on top of taxing the corporate uh, income uh, highly? Uh, those, I think those controversies are absolutely crucial uh, for, uh, or, or very closely related to the set of facts that I am uh, laying out here. And I will be happy to take questions. <laughs> Marcela. Thank you, Nano. Um, so I had one very specific question and, and like a more general comment. Um, the, the specific question is on the measurement of productivity for the different factors of average productivity. So for, for labor, you're doing this very nice adjustment of human capital uh, through the use of microdata. Um, but there's no equivalent adjustment for capital. Um, for things such as intangible capital and the quality of capital. Um, so, of course, that's not easy to do, and the kind of data that you have uh, may not borrow itself to that. But I think in terms of the interpretation of the results, um, the, the apparent realization that, uh, that uh, capital is being uh, rewarded in all regions above its uh, productivity, I, I need has to be. I think need has to be. You know, pass through uh, at least the 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 questioning that 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 adjustment is not uh, happening in a world where we know that uh, intangible capital um, has become increasingly important. So that's that's the specific question. And then the more general comment is just that um, I think. The, one, one uh, running theme of the whole session is, uh, is the importance of uh, understanding the differences for the discussion of reduction of inequality between uh, the countries where this has been a traditional discussion, the low and middle income countries, and the th things that have been brought to the center of the debate now that this has become also a concern in, uh, in the richer countries. Um, so the, the, the most prominent issues there of the increase of the, sorry, the decrease of the labor share, the increase of market concentration, the increase of uh, huge uh, fortunes. Um, the simply need to be 
taken with a lot of caution when informality is so prevalent as as, uh, um, as it is in our countries. And uh, Andres showed a, a version of why that is so important in this debate, the things that you're showing that are so extremely different uh, uh, in terms of uh, between the low and middle income countries and the richer countries and all the other discussions that have gone around. Okay. Let, so th there are like five questions there. So <laughs> let, let me begin by saying that there's the issue of, um, of, of um, you know, personal firms uh, is roughly taken into account here with this Golding's methodology. Uh, b uh, you remember the methodology, the point is they, they take out from the whole um, uh, income uh, uh, mixed, but it's not enough, <laughs> let's say, this, this is not doing the deal. So l l let me go back. So this data set, the, fir the first time we think about this data set was because we were thinking about the composing uh, changes in, the, in income distribution uh, like, like the total Gini is factor, each factor share multiplied by the Gini of the ownership of the factor. Um, and this was the plan. Uh, but we need a lot of time to build, uh, to, to have the, the whole distribution of uh, ownership of, of, each, uh, of all the factors. So, but basically, uh, the, the message here is, look, in, for the whole sample, these changes in factor shares may be explaining an increase in inequality in high-income countries, but not in low-income in low income countries as a whole, because we will have to, 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 to take a look at, at each country uh, to see. But what we see is that you have a lot of noise, but at the end of the day, they end up basically in the same place they began. Um, then, well, you know the other paper, we, we have the same set of authors, we have a paper uh, relating the, the resource boom with uh, income distribution. And what we find there is that there's, there's, um, during the boom, the Dutch disease mechanism uh, increased the demand for unskilled labor. So, so this helped to reduce inequality during these years. If we are right, we should see uh, a deterioration, or let's say, uh, an increase in inequality again now. Uh, the capital. <laughs> so th there's a beautiful paper. I don't remember the author, but it's, it's an econometrica, and it's, I don't know, from one year ago or something. And he claims that uh, the increase in, in physical capital share is basically due to, to untangibles. Uh, it, it may be the case, uh, and, and if you talk to Odette Galor, he's going to tell you, here you have entrepreneurial uh, remuneration to entrepreneurial activities, which, which is actually labor income. Fair enough. Uh, we, we cannot, for the moment, we don't know how to deal with that. The weak answer I can uh, give you is, this is quite standard. We, we are just doing what the other people are doing, but with more fine-tuning. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not a nice question, uh, answer, but okay. It's, if, no? Okay, thank you very much. Ah, sorry, sorry, Marcella. Thank you, Nano. I wanted to ask why are you packing together low-income and middle-income countries? When we've looked at how uh, capital shares and labor shell, uh, shares evolve in work uh, with, with Marcela Slava, we see a lot of variance across countries. Yes. So it's a strange to yes. pack them together. No, no the, uh, good point. The point, we are building the data set and we have to show you something in 20 minutes. So <laughs> this, is, this is the answer. Uh, of course, for the paper, it would be nice to have uh, different sets of, of countries and to analyze um, heterogeneities within groups. Santiago.
Thank you, Nano. Uh, my question is, what is the composition of the data set? Perhaps I'm wrong, but what I saw is basically all the aggregate facts are driven mostly yes. for, for high-income uh, high countries. So the, the composition is quite balanced, but high-income countries make up a higher part of the total income, and th this is explaining part of the story. We had, we made the same figures with um, waiting uh, for population. Uh, things change, but not that much. Yes, but yeah. my concern is if maybe because there's an underrepresentation of these developing countries, then perhaps the, the facts that you're saying are not, are basically due to selection and not because this is basically uh, but, but, an stylist fact in no, you know, uh, Middle East. Uh, no, or, I, I see, I see, yeah. I see. So, so you, if you're talking about number of countries in each group, it's quite balanced. The, okay. the point is the size of, of the countries. Okay. Um, and, and again, this is the standard. This is how people uh, measure uh, the global uh, trend in, in labor income share. But, but again, it's, it goes basically in the same direction as, as uh, Marcela's point. I, um. Thank you, Nano, for your presentation. And my question regards the natural resource uh, measurement and like what does it include? I understand maybe the minerals and, and the oil and oil and gas, but maybe have you thought about including maybe carbon reduction as uh, means of capital. Okay, that, that's a very good point. So there's not only minerals, it's also forest. So it's, it's the data, the, the World Bank is providing a nice data set. But, it, so you're asking about externalities. So you, destruction of value. And uh, I think there's something, but, but it's quite imperfect. Uh, so this data set is, is not going to be good to analyze the, the things you have in mind. But when we think about ways to work with that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.